Howdy Moz fans and welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. Today I'm going to talk about this extremely troublesome and worrisome problem that uh, Google has expanded keyword not to provided potentially to 100% of all organic referrals and not this isn't necessarily they flipped the entire switch uh, this week and everyone's going to see it, but certainly over the next several months has been suggested that we may receive no uh, keyword data at all in referrals from Google. Very troubling and concerning, um, obviously, if you're a marketer. I think it should be very troubling and concerning if you're a web user as well, because marketers don't use this data to do evil things or invade people's privacy. Marketers use this data to make the web a better place. And the agreement that you know, that marketers have always had, that website creators have always had with search engines since their inception was, sure, we'll let you crawl our sites, you provide us the keyword data so that we can improve the internet together. And I think uh, this is Google abusing their monopolistic position in the United States. Unfortunately, I don't really see a way out of it. I don't think marketers can make a strong enough case uh, politically or to consumer groups to get this removed. Maybe the EU can eventually. But in any case, let's deal with the reality that we're faced with today, which is that keyword not provided maybe 100% of your referrals. And so keyword data is essentially gone. We don't know when search engines send a visit to us. Well, when Google sends a visit, Bing, to their credit and to Microsoft's credit, uh, enduringly has kept that data accessible. But we don't know when Google sends a visit to our sites and pages what that person searched for. And previously, we could do some sampling. Uh, now we can't even do that. There are some big tasks that we use that data for. And so to start with, I, I want to try and identify the uses for keyword referral data, at least the very important ones as I perceive them. There are certainly many more. Number one, finding opportunities to improve a page's performance or its ranking. If you see that a page of yours is receiving a lot of search traffic or that a keyword is sending a lot of search traffic, or even a little bit of search traffic, but the page is not ranking very well, you know that by improving that page's ranking, you have an opportunity to earn a lot more search traffic. That's a very valuable thing as a marketer. You can also see if a search phrase uh, or query is sending traffic to a page, but that page has a high bounce rate for that traffic, low pages per visit, low conversion rate, you know, hey, I'm not doing a good job serving the visitor. I need to improve how the page addresses that. That's, that's one of the key things we use keyword referral data for. Secondarily, uh, connecting rank improvement efforts, right? things that we do in the SEO world to move up our rankings to the traffic growth that we receive from them. And this is very important for consultants and for agencies, for in-house SEOs as well, to show our value to our managers, our clients. Really, really tough to have this data taken away. C, understanding how searchers perceive your brand and your content. When we look down the list of phrases that sent us traffic, we could see things like, oh, this is how people are thinking about my brand, thinking about this product I launched, thinking about this content that I've put out. Really challenging to, to do that uh, nowadays. And D, uncovering keyword opportunities, right? We could certainly see, hey, this is sending a small amount of traffic. This is doing some long tail stuff. Hey, let's turn this into a broader piece of content uh, let's try and optimize for some of those keyword phrases that you know we're barely ranking on or we have a page that's not really addressing that keyword phrase that we're ranking on. We can, we can address that, we can improve that. So I'm going to try and tackle some relatively simplistic ways and I'm not going to walk through all the details you would need to do this, but I think many folks in the uh, SEO and marketing sphere will address these over the weeks and months to come. Starting with A, how do I find an, uh, find opportunities to improve a page's ranking or its performance with users when I can't see keyword referral data. How do I know which page people are coming to? Well, thankfully, we can use the connection, the intersection of a few different sources of data. So pages that are receiving search visits is a big one, and this is going to be used throughout. Instead of looking at keyword data, in, uh, keyword level data, we're going to be looking a lot at page level data. Which pages received referral visits from Google search. And thankfully, that's still something, still data that we do get and can get. Um, and I think that'll, that'll likely stay with us because we can always see uh, a referral source and we know which pages are loaded. So even if Google Analytics were to remove that, I think a third-party analytics provider would step in. Pages receiving search visits plus rank tracking data can get us a little close to this because we can essentially say, hey, we know this page is ranking well for 
these five or 10 keywords that we have some reasonable expectation that, that they have keyword search volume, they're receiving search visits and yet they're not performing well or they're not ranking particularly well. So improving them should be able to drive up uh, our search traffic, improving their performance with users should be able to drive up our conversion rate optimization. Okay. Optionally, we could also add in things like Google Webmaster Tools or AdWords data. AdWords data being used on the keyword side to fill in for, hey, what's the volume that a keyword is getting, and Google Webmaster Tools data to be able to see a list of some keywords that maybe are sending us traffic. Um, Dr. Pete wrote a good post recently about the relative accuracy of Google Webmaster Tools, and while it's not Unfortunately, it's not as good as any of the other methods. Uh, it's still not awful, and so that data is potentially usable. This will give us a list of pages that get, get search visits or are in, or targeting important search terms. They rank, right? They rank well. We can see that from the ranking data, and they have the potential to improve. So this gets us to the answer to this question. This used to be really simple to get at. Now it's more difficult, but still possible. B connecting our SEO efforts to traffic growth from search. I know this is tr going to be tremendously hard, and this is probably one of the biggest tolls that this change is taking on SEO folks because, you know, as SEOs, as marketers, we've shown our value by saying, hey, look, we're driving up search visits. It's, uh, you know, some of it's unbranded, some of it's branded, some of it's not provided, but you get a rough sense of this, and you really need that percentage of, well, what percent of the traffic is actually you going and getting us new visitors that never would have found us versus branded stuff that's just sort of sort of rising on its own? Maybe it's rising because of efforts that marketers are making, investments in content and in social media and in email and all of these other wonderful things. But it's hard to know. It's hard to directly map that. So here's a couple ways. Well, one of the ways, really. Optionally, we can use AdWords to bid on branded terms and phrases. When we, when we do that, you might want to have a you know, relatively broad match on your branded terms and phrases so that you can see keyword volume that is branded from impression data. And that gives you a sense of, you know, what's the trajectory here? If we're seeing, you know, if let's say this is the, the branded line here, right, and, and then we're seeing it grow, we can identify, oh, that's not us driving a bunch of new, uh, you know, uh, non-branded new keyword terms and phrases. That's our brand search increasing. And so we can sort of discount that or apply that in our reporting effectively. If we see, on the other hand, that it's staying flat, but search traffic overall you know, is going kind of up and to the right, well, now we know that's unbranded. Optionally, we can also, if, if we don't want to be bidding and spending a lot of money with Google AdWords and trying to keep our impression counts high, we can use things like Google Insights uh, or even downloading AdWords volume data estimates month over month to be able to track those sorts of things uh, for branded. Certainly, one of the things that I would recommend that you're doing e even prior to this change is tracking rankings on buckets, right? Buckets of head terms versus mid, uh, you know, chunky middle versus long tail. So phrases that are getting lots of search volume, a good amount of search volume, very little search volume. You want to have a different buckets of those so that I can see oh, hey, my rankings generally are improving in this bucket or that bucket. Same with branded versus non-branded, right? You want to be able to identify and track those separately and then compare uh, against visits that you're seeing to pages that are ranking for those terms, right? We need to look at the pages that are receiving, pages receiving search traffic from those different buckets. Again, much more challenging to do these days, but you know, anytime, anytime we see that uh, the complexity of our practice is increasing, we also have an opportunity because it means that those of us who are savvy, sophisticated, able to track this data are far more useful and employable and important. And uh, those organizations that, you know, use great marketers are going to receive outside benefit, outsized benefit from doing so. C, how do I understand and analyze how searchers perceive my brand? What, what are they searching for that's leading them to my site? How are they searching for terms related to my brand? Again, we can bid on AdWords terms like I talked about. You can use uh, suggestion sources or, or keyword suggestion sources like Google Suggest, Uber Suggest, certainly AdWords own volume data, SEM Rush, et cetera, to see the keyword expansions related to your brand or to content that's very closely tied to your brand. And, internal site search data, right? You've got a, you know, a search box up in the top right-hand corner. People are typing in stuff. You want to see what that, 
uh, XYZ is that they're typing in, those can help as well and can provide you some opportunities that lead to D. How do I uncover new keyword opportunities to target? Of course, there's the classic methodology that we've all employed, which is keyword research. But usually we compared that to the terms that we we're already sending us traffic. And then we go look and say, oh, OK, we're doing fine for these. We don't need to worry. Now we need to take keyword research tools and add some form of rank tracking data. That could be from Google Webmaster Tools, despite its um, mediocrity in terms of uh, accuracy. We can use manual rank data, right? We can search for it ourselves, or we can use automated data. One of the criticisms for all rank tracking data is always, but there's lots of personalization and geographic uh, you know, localization and these kinds of things that are biasing searches. How do I see all of that? And the answer is, well, you can't really, right? Personalization is going to fluctuate things. It may be included sort of in the Google Webmaster Tools data, but as Dr. Pete showed in his post, it looks a little funky right now. Uh, certainly. And for localization, you can add, you know, plus the geo in the string to be able to see where you rank in different geographies if you want to track those. Uh, that's something you'll be able to do in Moz Analytics and probably many of the other keyword tracking tools out there too. And of course, optionally, this is expensive and this is, you know, I hate to say this is Google being evil, but this is probably what Google wants you to do when they take away not provided, which is you have to run AdWords campaigns or you can run AdWords campaigns targeting those keywords so that you can see new expansion opportunities, areas where, oh, hey, we bid on this, it sent impressions, it sent some traffic that looks like it's worthwhile, we're not ranking for it organically. Again, you could see that through your rank tracking data or through pages receiving visits from search and then uh, targeting those terms. So a lot of this data, you know, and, and a lot of these uh, opportunities are retrievable. They're just, just a lot harder. And, you know, I will say this is, this is somewhat self-promotional, but I think one of Moz's as a company's missions and, and obligations to the search marketing world is to try and help replace, repair, and make these processes easier. And so, you can guess that over the next you know, six to 12 months, that's going to be a big part of our roadmap, trying to help uh, you folks and, and all marketers get to this data. For now, these methodologies can and should be helpful to you. And I expect to see lots of great discussion about other ways to go about this in the comments. Thanks, everyone. Take care.